I'm already getting so much confidence uncontested in that orb. The site that is going to be oppressed is going to be B. Despite Wits getting out, he does get tagged up, but Sushi Boys, he is a sentinel, but he is going to move his defensive line. No flank watch needed if I kill everybody. Probably is the call, but a very, very classic setup here. The Sage Wall, the Viper Utility, and a full five-man retake is in hand for Secret. But now Zergsha, they have a very, very strong post-plant position, SRA. They're going to have to destroy first a couple of things. They do have their own smokes to lend them a little bit more leeway into the site, but they have to still clear out a couple of angles here. They don't have the recon dart from Jesse Bash, and unfortunately, that does not paint the picture for Team Secret as they just rush into the site. Dubstep, even if he does get a couple of kills here, that vertical wall uh, placed in by Cruz will make it absolutely horrendous for him to try to just uh, push forward this teeny tiny bit. And my oh my, did the defenses on B, even though both Sentinels were there, just drop off as soon as. And this was kind of awkward for Wits being spotted by Surf out in the open from the back of Yellow. And one thing that we have to take into consideration too, every time we see a Zerksha set play, there's just so much to explain. I really love the dual purpose use of that wall. Um, aside mm. from, of course, it giving a little more safety net for Zerksha, it allowed um, Cruz to use that verticality on the rope. Again, just a lot of versatility too, Asurai. So a very, very memorable play already, but Sushi Boys, he storms aside, he finds Wits. A lot of proactivity, as Laika would mention, uh, towards Yellow. But that is not going to be possible as Cruz is going to go for the exact same wall. Are they going to replicate the exact same success? Signs point to yes. Signs point to really yes. Morkum gets a trade, but he will get peppered down as Scary gets that second frag. Now a 2v3. Still though, Dubstep manages to salvage a kill. Has to find yet another. Dubstep looking kind of like Wits right now. <laughs> and a surf again, just one more hit. What? Oh! Oh, okay. what a shot! Okay, all right, a bit more expensive, but definitely not, definitely not winnable for wits. Question mark. Oh man. Okay, I am taken <laughs> aback by that shot. What a Same. what an adjustment! I was absolutely certain that he was gonna get peppered down there, but like I said, it's being shown. Oh, and the timing! Sushi Boys and Foxy has a beautiful, beautiful crossfire in this. Are they gonna spray into this? Actually, no, the patience is there. And Dubstep thinking, if they can't see me and if I ignore them, they're not gonna be looking at me. But that is not the case. Azersha looking so, so, so strong. They were second guessing themselves so much on B. As you mentioned, it all started with the when the recon from Jesse Vash just did not get any value whatsoever, no tags at all. So Wits had to just double peek once again, but uh, I don't know, man. He was so low already. There was like four people there. It feels like the start of Ascent all over again. And because of that, because the loss of Wits, now they didn't have anybody to actually truly check B main or to address that angle. And because the smoke was being turned on and off again by, um, by Scary on mid, they were second guessing. Maybe they got through the alarm button. Maybe they got through there and it just gave Sersha enough time to go themselves into the B side, making both Dispenser and Borkum flinch. That's all they, they needed. That's all that they wanted. And they got it. So now the information train that uh, I think, like you mentioned, right, Borkum, he was the one that was really, really aware of that mid flank. But it's still it's playing close. He really will not let go of this domain. As the drones and the utility, they are going to apply his way. He has been spotted. He doesn't get tagged up, but again, just the safety net, the get out of jail for free card. Really, really strong. Now Surf, the king of blades potentially. The title bestowed upon very, very few. Has to use that shorty to get rid of the all-seeing trademark. Dubstep still has that operator too, but so far they have been coalesced into going into B. Oh, they're committing to B, but no, there's still 30 seconds on the clock. Do they know that they're going to be running into a very, very aggressive Viper Spit? Surf could easily go vertical here. But again, no blades have to be wasted. He goes for the second floor. Is he just going to go past? Yes, he does. And right on the money as Borkum tries to spay everybody down. Wait a minute. But Surf, he gets rid of it. He's forced to plant, but Dumpstep also gets a double. This is falling apart. Foxy yet, yet again being the lone warrior. Just tasked to save this Vandal, perhaps. And this looked so good for Zergsha. 
It did look so good, but dropped in the pockets of Team Secret. I was a little bit scared for Borg there because he was alone, but I mean, they got past him. But ideally, or rather, realistically, it was only really Surf that got past the Viper Spit, so he didn't take the poison damage, but the rest of his team did through all of that thick, thick wall. And because Surf wasn't able to find Borkum, they just needed to play that contact and need to flush him out before they got the plant on the spike. Because what would happen there was there would have been an awkward spot where the rest of Team Secret would be at Rafters and then Borkum was still at Pipes holding a really strong angle. And speaking of angles, Dubsifa here is here, excuse me, with the Operator alongside Wits, who is very much close onto the contact, but this could go sour. As Maybe, Asurai. All these Ecos are taking a toll mentally on Team Secret. For sure that is, man. There is that point where Team Secret does overheat and gets incredibly antsy, as I mentioned previously. And you're kind of seeing that now as they try to get map control after map control. Maybe it's the lack of initiators, per se, because usually you'd see Team Secret with double innies, and it gives them so much information to utilize, right? But this time, only really relying on Jesse Vash makes, I think, the rest of Team Secret just wince a little bit and try to get for that map control. Borgum has a position here, but it's, it immediately gets flushed out by Cruz. And now, they're preparing for themselves a nice little round all together. Vash, not sure if he's already given away his presence, but this slow peak again. I mentioned it already. They love to try to go for these peaks now, but it hasn't really worked out in the end. Dispenser. He's quadrupled the position here. He's the fourth man to actually just place himself on a position right now. Which is good. He gets the one. But he's going to get waterfalled by Sersha. And now it's whips to remain. He does find Cruz somewhere, somehow, some way. But it is going to be such a monumental task for him to even hit any of the other shots when he only has one more headhunter bullet in the chamber. And that is going to be Sersha once again with a clean enough bonus once more. Oh, well, look at that. Zerch has so much eco reserved for, you know, for a rainy day. And it's a testament on how quickly they can steal away the momentum. Secret, they are feeling the effects of it too. They are forced to buy up here. And again, a high prior round for them. They do put the operator in Wits' hands instead of dubstep. The Tour de Forest completely unavailable for him. We do see Jesse have that Hunter's Fury as well as a, another Viper's Pit. On the side of Zerksha, Foxy is so, so close to getting his own ultimate. And the rest of the squad too. Cruz with that res available, potentially goading Surf to be a little more aggressive this time around. Maybe, just maybe, promoting a bit of a contact play here. As Surf has found a little bit of verticality yet again to posture himself in wits. He's been mighty comfortable here. But the defense is a little more fragile on the side of mid but dispenser is here to patch the holes up it does find a very crucial player in the forms of Cruz, but still a default at hand Placing swamp grenade. oh no this pick up from sushi boys is gonna be absolutely well timed dispenser was just looking at the entrances of that hallway and he got gutted from it and sersha really holding on to this lead of theirs what a what a trace from Surf. Now this is going to be again a quick and clean take onto the B site as the rest of Sersha. Oh, oh, what a shot from Lord. Surf. That was Lord. a minuscule pixel peak angle. An now it seems like Team Secret, they've lost their win here, Raf. Sersha is starting to build up a lot more steam and they're about to hit that 6-3 to three already. Unless Dubstep and Borgum have to say otherwise. But they're, as you can see in the position on the map, very afraid of the Lurk that could come through Foxy. And he can uh, always just do this once they actually uh, approach the B site. I think the winning formula for Zerksha has been Foxy being incredibly forward. Maybe much more forward than a typical One Sova. But remaining. the way that he's been winning out gunfights has been so, so convincing. Scary yet again, taking another frag for his name. And Borkum has to make a mad dash towards safety. Now, I did mention, right, at the end of our previous map, if Secret lost to that pistol, then that is going to put them in a bit of a doldrum. They've recovered really, really well. But Zerksha, they want to be the mighty maelstrom to throw them in rough seas yet again. Now, Zerksha, Asurai, a high prior round for them. A momentum thieving that round, potentially. Secret, what do they have in the bag? Do they have to dig as deep as they can? Because, man, just looking at that shot too, 
What is that, Surf? That is crazy. He's been at mobile approach. Being the entry frag, being the first contact line he of defense. We ally. do have Cruz expend. Oh! But Surf actually finds just the edge left. of its haircut telling him, I like ya cut, G. And now they still have that barrier orb. They're gonna invest it. They have B site. Secret have to react. Alert too. Sushi Boys is just around the corner. Borkum has no idea. But Jesse, he reels it back. He finds Scary, making this a little easier on the side of Zerksha. But alas, Zerksha says difficulty will not be lowered. Get good. Looking like a Souls Ooh. game. Looking like a raid boss. Surf gets a third kill to his name, Asurai. And it looks like he might just do this all alone. A little bit of support, but Borkum, beautiful dodge roll. Still a lot of stamina left in the tank. As he gets one more big crucial swing. Sushi Boys is on the flank. And 8 to 4 forward. They still don't have any idea where Zerksha is playing from. They don't have the recon drone just yet. Or rather, the recon dart in their pockets. They're waiting for it. Miss Spencer, I don't think he knows that Scary is right here. They don't flush him out. This could potentially be perfect for Scary. He gets two, potentially, but no, it's the Spencer who swings out. Sushi Boys even gets one. And Secret, once again, a doorstop in their way. They cannot close this on Zerksha. Zerksha, they're very much ready to come out again, to come out to play. Look at this. They've pulled back the discipline just absolutely wonderful on their end jesse bash will get that recon ball a little bit of space for borkum to swing and he finds sushi boys is this going to be a tit for tat an eye for an eye for them as borkum they double swing with jesse but look at this the dance the maneuverability the sur surf on that ghost but cruz finds dubstep 1v2 borkum looks at his watch is it time is it minutes to midnight for zerksha is the doomsday clock running down as he goes for the ballsy he play and my goodness what the with the wall is this gonna go through <gasps> yes it does Damage it is good. Him extra time that's right extra time the acrobatics but foxy is oh. like a medieval archer Game the air up. shot caught you again zerksha so convincing so so sharp the wall the wall from cruz I mean, the snake bite was a nice idea from Borkum, but there was still plenty of time to, for them to back away. And all that damage that the snake bite did, Cruz just topped it off for uh, for Scary there. And my goodness, you're right. They did not clear out the position. Actually, not Scary, but Foxy rather. But they did not uh, find the positioning Ooh. against Scary initially because of the smoke uh, prepared here by Sersha. And it gets closer and closer, 9-4. to four. They might have to try to do something a little bit more drastic. Very aggressive mid control. Somehow Borkum does find that control on Boiler. Cruz, he's very much far focused onto dubstep here. Ooh, now what? that's going to be a try on the pickup on the Spectre overall. And somehow the trades are going in favor of Team Secret. They haven't picked up any of the weapons just yet. It's all about the numbers for them and serve. Yeah, yeah it's too late for, uh, for Jesse Vash there. Still, again, mm. they have everything that they need. Just a, a little bit of a mishap that happened on mid, but still should be fine oh, overall. Backs away, waits for his teammate. This is absolutely perfect for Sersha regardless. Dubstep is somewhere lurking on mid, and this is at least giving them that information that very vain, very small possibility that B could be an open site here as he does pick up that Spectre. He needs to get a little bit more deeper here for that control, but not too deep that he does... Uh, waste his life and doesn't get that crossfire with the rest of Team Secret as Sersha is well enough planted on the A side. I think the plant was heard by Scary and that will coax the heavy rotation from Sersha here as Dubstep won't be looking to stop them from rotating in. They've clumped up as a 3-0. Where is the spike planted <gasps> actually out in the open? And was he spotted as he tried to actually peek out through ice uh, Snowman here? Spots oh. out all of them, backs away with actually through jungle, and he hits the shot, but not gonna be enough. Down to Dispenser, into the corner, does hit the what? shot, and Timmy the turret! Once again, you saw him activate on Haven. He'll <laughs> Pardon me, Ho Homer pulls out the bat. Revenge! <laughs> As Zerksha, as they're reinvigorated, they are absolutely on fire. And what I like is that they're not overheating at all. Again, the safety net of having a Sage is such a luxury to have. What do they do with a Barrier Orb, you though, considering run. that Surf has no more armor? 
We do see that lockdown. Do they have anything to stop it? Dubstep. He is going to go for a bit of an off time, but both jets are on fire. They're searing. No, my... stops the advance. And oh my god, indeed. As everybody beckons, they call to the heavens. As pandemonium ensues, Pandora's box opens yet again. This does not slow down. The drone is here. I think it spots out Jesse. Does it get the tag? Yes, it does. Sushi Boys is chasing like a mad lad. A man on fire. A man crazed. Morkum with wide eyes finds Sushi Boys. 2v3. Zerx is still very much possible. They, I think they intertwine Viper's pits here. So what is safe? What is no man's land? Dispenser holding on to whatever he has. He still has that one, one nano swarm that could potentially turn their fates. Zerxia, I don't know who's going to win this round, Asurai. This is too tough to call. Whoever spots first. And now that's going to be the safety net of Secret getting cut down. Jesse Vash finds his counterpart as it's the Alpha and Omega are true to the lore of Secret. <gasps> scary, he finds the Spencer. Oh, no. He's not hitting him. He's not hitting him. He's not hitting him. What? But he confuses it. Scary. Oh, my lord, Scary. Again, the oh. Alpha and Omega Earth, they intertwine. But Zerkshop is king of both. Both crises. What a clutch from Sersha! I mean, Surf with the 2K on the operator, and then layer upon layer of Viper's Pit, so that nobody actually knows what's going on inside of that. The Spencer, I like the idea. It looked like it could have worked, but Scary was just... Like, no shot was connecting, man. He was right on top of the spike. What? Absolutely tremendous round from Sergio right there. And Team Secret, they still have some purchase power. They have dubstep on the blades. But you could just see that they are getting oh. just absolutely demolished. Shot will not connect. Surf does get tagged, but again, we know how the tag does absolutely nothing because of the heals coming through. Vash needs to have something with this Hunter's Fury, and he actually tags three. This might give a little bit of access for his teammates to come into the site. It was only Dispenser in, but they are getting separated by this massive wall. And again, the hopes and dreams for Team Secret, for both of these teams actually, to get into Copenhagen is... And let's let the game play out as Sushi Boys will get an early tag. But it seems that aggression is the name of the game for both sides here. That's quite a bit of utility on both sides being expended, but Wits lights it up. Finding Scary, who has been an absolute demigod in the later rounds. His acumen is going to be sorely missed by Zerksha. They don't have that res available. Sushi Boys is the lone rifler. And he gets caught up, but it doesn't matter. He already finds the Spencer. He tries to fight for the angles, but Borkum gets the trade out. And B-Main, B-Main is where it's at. They push forward, they march forward. The Sheriffs have been absolutely lethal for the side of Zerksha. We've seen them steal the most important rounds away. They try to do the same as Cruz denies the plant with a minute oh. left still. And Foxy still trying to set up that dart. Again, the movement. Backstab. The backstab indeed, Surf. Is this a knife to the spine? Is this the paralysis shot potentially? And now the war on two fronts is happening. Dubstep gets a shot. Surf is all alone. He could be the dream breaker, the heartbreaker. They line up. This is a temporary re reprise for his 1v1, but Dubstep. You can call whatever you want, Asurai, to the jugular, to the heart, between the eyes, the bifurcating swing, the decapitating blow. It's right around the corner. We are literally trying to balance it out on a single thread of silk. Zerksha. Any moment this momentum could go in their way, any moment it could slip away. We really still cannot call this, but Zerksha again, they're just looking so impressive. Surf undeterred. And again, Foxy getting that opening frag on dubstep is absolutely monumental. No more spearhead, no more sharp ed edge of the blade. As Zerksha, they continue their march. Is this really the beginning to the road to Copenhagen? Oh my goodness, Wits. He is playing with our heartstrings here, the widest swing in the universe. One more minute to go. One minute, 13 seconds. The longest of maybe Team Secret's life. Pressure is mounting. But again, it's kind of like a volcano ass, right? Any moment, a cat catastrophic event could happen. Any moment, we could see the fall of uh, Bastille yet again. Cruz getting tagged up. But an innocuous period. The calm before the storm. If they can get into the site, they will have the Viper Spit ready here. <gasps> oh, the whitest peak in the world, man, and gets punished quickly Surf! by Surf. And there it is. Final nails into the coffin. Dispenser and Jesse Bash to remain. Can the old dogs of Team Secret breathe in new life as they need it right here and right now? Jesse Bash has been tagged down to 30. Still, Sersha are five men strong. And is this 
the coup de gras, the absolute perfect finish for the Thai team to get us into the grand finals and to get their slot for Masters Copenhagen as Dispenser will have to go through the meat grinder of the crossfire. He's down, uh -oh. and it's all down to Daddy Bash, but it's not gonna work. It's 